A few days ago, we received some very exciting news about the long-talked-about Project Madrid for Busch Gardens Williamsburg in 2020. Let's look at this and find out what we have going on. You guys have probably all heard what Project Madrid is at this point. From what I can gather, it's been talked about since about 2017. So this project has been in the works for quite some time now. And it's certainly shaping up to be something big and something very exciting for Busch Gardens Williamsburg. On February 8th, BGWFans.com posted this great article with a lot of information that they received from permits of sorts that Bush Gardens filed. And there is a lot of stuff we still don't know, and I want to stress that a little bit here. There's a lot that we don't know yet, and we don't know the exact elements of this coaster, but there's a lot that we can infer from the information that we do have as well. These documents here that BGW fans posted, this confirms what everybody knew was gonna be coming in 2020. It's gonna be a huge new roller coaster. It's gonna be in the Festa Italia section of the park. And it looks like it's gonna be sort of like an add-on plaza to that area. And it's not a new area in and of itself. But getting onto the coaster, we have an overhead view of what the layout is going to look like, essentially. Basically, this is showing where the footers are going to be going, and we don't know exactly what the elements are going to be. We can only guess at this point. But it appears that this is most likely going to be an Intamin project, and something very interesting is it looks like this is going to utilize the very fast switch track technology that Intamin has developed and is going to be putting on Park Asterix 2021 launch coaster. And um, this is going to be a shuttle coaster, so it's going to utilize that switch track and have forwards and backwards launches to get the ride through the whole course. Looking at this overhead layout, we have the station, and then it looks like the train is going to depart the station, make a 90 degree turn to the left, go through a sort of twisted S-curve type thing, and then it's going to hit what looks like is the first launch. It looks pretty short. This is probably going to be a slower launch, and it looks like this is basically just going to be used to build up some momentum to turn the train around and go through some sort of element. It could be like a helix or something like that. And then it looks like it's going to go through another little S-curve type thing. And then it's going to hit this section right here that appears to be the switch track. And then it will hit a forwards launch. And then it's not going to go all the way up whatever this element is. Um, a lot of people seem to think this will be a top hat here. It's going to go backwards, the switch track will have moved, and the train will go backwards into a massive vertical spike. Then it's going to fall down from that spike, it's going to hit another launch, take you all the way over that element, which, like I said, many seem to think will be a top hat. And then it's going to hit the max speed, and the train is going to traverse a lot of wide sweeping turns, it looks like. It's going to start by turning 90 degrees to the right, and then just go through this massive turn over the river, and then it's going to take us basically back around to the station. Um, but looking at this layout, it really doesn't look like to me that this is going to have any inversions at all. Just based on the nature of the layout and the way the footers move. And also, thinking about it too, something that would kind of support this theory in my eyes is that Busch Gardens Williamsburg already has several coasters that focus on inversions. Loch Ness Monster, Griffin, Alpengeist, Tempesto. So, you know, that's four coasters that focus on inversions. Just an interesting point there. And it looks like there's going to be a lot of wide sweeping turns suggesting that this coaster is going to be traveling at very high speeds, which isn't really a surprise either. This is going to be a huge ride. 
Whether it's a giga or not remains to be seen. According to documents proposed in the past by Busch Gardens Williamsburg, this coaster could in fact reach heights of up to 315 feet tall. And um, I'm thinking that the vertical spike could lead to that 315 foot height and drop. But what doesn't make sense at the same time is some leaks that were made several months back by SeaWorld Entertainment. And this coaster was listed as having a top speed of 76 miles per hour. So there's, you know, some contradicting things here. Like I said, we don't know everything yet. Maybe that 76 miles per hour is just a launch speed um, and it's not the top speed of the ride. And it has been pointed out in the past, um, if anybody knows where exactly this came from, uh, let me know in the comments. But apparently the ride is going to have its largest drop and reach its top speed going over that river. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see how this all turns out. Whatever is coming down the line, this is certainly going to be very exciting, especially for coaster enthusiasts. And I'm hoping to make it out to Busch Gardens Williamsburg in the year 2020. I was thinking about possibly trying to make it this year. I really don't think that's going to happen, but I definitely want to try to get out there next year, especially with this edition. Do you guys think this is going to be a giga coaster and any ideas for certain elements that may be coming in this layout or what would you like to see? This is going to be a really big and very exciting looking shuttle coaster, unlike anything we've seen in the United States or anywhere really at this point. Another really interesting thing is if Intamin does manufacture this ride, I mean, Intamin has not been working in the United States very much at all due to all of their reliability issues. Um, parks are just tired of putting all of this time and investing tons of money into these huge rides that are just down all the time. And we've seen a large shift in the industry away from Intamin with the Harry Potter coaster opening this year. And then Project Madrid here, if it is in fact manufactured by Intamin, could we be seeing a sort of resurgence coming within the next few years? It would certainly be very exciting, as despite the unreliability of Intamin's rides, they certainly do push boundaries and make really phenomenal rides. So I would definitely love to see Intamin, you know, giving another opportunity in the United States and, um, you know, see how it pans out. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Leave your thoughts in the comments below about what you think Project Madrid could be. This has been a long time in the works, like I said, and we're finally getting most likely pretty close to uh, finding out a lot more official details. Stay tuned. Um, if you want more content on theme parks and roller coasters, make sure you subscribe. I love hearing from you guys. I try to read every single comment. Um, thanks to all of my new subscribers. My channel is really starting to grow a lot and I really appreciate that. So thanks for sticking around and watching the videos and I will see you all next time. This is Coaster Daddy. Bye.